This is the IC Pixels podcast with David and Anthony Cavins. We're going to talk about design in everyday situations. There you go. And welcome back to the IC Pixels podcast. This is Anthony. And this is David. Oh, man. We're back again to talk about things that relate to design and um, whatever else comes to mind at the moment. <laughs> um, so you started a new job. I know last podcast we talked about starting a new job and everything, and like you started, you've actually started your job now. So how's that going? So new job, I I'm enjoying it so far. Um, I, I think. You know how like things are always more interesting when they're new. Well, not new. Well, just new things are interesting. So I always enjoy like coming to a new like, job because then like women and <laughs> or, oh, I can neither confirm or deny that. But yeah, um, <laughs> so I'm enjoying it so far. But you know, it's one of those things. I don't know. You know, we'll see how how it is. You know, three or four months from now or whatever. But so far, it's good. I. So one thing we I know we talked about in our last episode was like finding a way to show value early. Um, and the job I just started recently, because it was something different than what I'm used to doing, it took me a while to find like you got to find your your niche or your niche or whatever the word is, where like, hey, I'm, I'm the guy that does X or Y or, you know, like if you think about like a basketball analogy, you know, you got hired to be the point guard then you know exactly what you should do. But in a job, you, you know, you're just one of the developers or one of the designers or whatever. So you've got to find like where you can fit into the team and you know, what you can deliver that other people may not be able to deliver. So it took me a little yeah. bit to find that particular area. You know, I was hired to do a specific type of thing, but um, it took a while to, you know, get my feet, you know, my feet on the ground or whatever you want to say. But um, yeah, I've, finally been able to you know actually deliver some value people seen it and been excited about it so that's great and um so far so good no complaints they always have like so (laughs) they always have apples and bananas and stuff in the kitchen in at you know the general kitchen y'all ain't got nothing on our kitchen well i'm moving buildings but apparently they keep the food stock there too you ain't got nothing i mean i don't even have Apples, bananas, take... bagels, and then I guess they'd be having lots of corporate meetings. Because, oh, I used to work at a different corporate office, and they were constantly having corporate meetings with, like, you know, where they bring in customers or whatever to talk about stuff. So there's always, like, leftovers from meetings, like cookies and brownies, yeah. and just all kinds of stuff you probably should be eating. But it's nice that it's there because I always, you know, I use it to supplement my lunch. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even have to bring a lunch. I've, oh. I've probably brought a lunch in like sometimes when I eat a salad for lunch or something like that. That's the only time I really need to bring the lunch. Otherwise, like they got bread, they got meat to put on the sandwiches, cheese, mayonnaise, you know, whatever you need. They got little guacamole things in the fridge. They got frozen vegetables, um, mad chips. So you could just yogurt, go in there and chef up some nuts. Yeah, there's a toaster oven. I mean, I'm moving offices, and I'm hoping to have some of that same stuff. But, yeah, like fruit and stuff, yeah, they always got that on deck. But, yeah, it's like you don't have to bring anything with you. Mm-hmm. You can just show up. Some days I bring something, but that's if I have some leftovers or something like that. But otherwise, I don't have to bring nothing to life. I mean, I can just make whatever there. <laughs> yeah, that's like awesome. It's like a nice feeling. It's like, oh, I didn't eat breakfast. Okay, well, I'm just going to let me grab a yogurt out of here. They have to have those naked smoothie juice things in there oh wow those, those are expensive oh lordy <laughs> those are no, nice. yeah, yeah no yeah no i mean I, I requested almond milk so they got that in there and i requested sun chips so they got that that's Maybe nice these little like that type of stuff rice and stuff you can warm up real quick <laughs> those type of things are the things that make you think twice before you quit a job i know he's like yeah they're gonna pay me more but are they gonna have food though <laughs> it makes a difference. Like I don't have to think about what I'm gonna eat. Well, I think about it, but it's more like, what do I want to eat <laughs> when I walk into the kitchen? It's kind of like when I was working at home. It's just like, hmm, what am I gonna eat? Yeah, they except got cereal. You ain't got to pay they for got it. Milk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like all this stuff. It's like 
I don't know. You got I mean, your uh, first paycheck yet? Yeah, I've gotten two two so far. So oh, balling. Spin them all. <laughs> no, um, I did because I had to pay rent, but <laughs> tomorrow will be my first not rent check. Mm-hmm. So I can I can you can go fix to the mall on my car. then straight to the dealership. <laughs> I got Holland Bros at the mall. Okay, all right. Pimp C um, will be proud that you made that choice. Yeah, well, you know. I mean, because if I was broke, I'd still be riding Mercedes. I mean, I I was broke, and I was definitely riding Mercedes. Hey, <laughs> apparently, it, <coughs> excuse me. Apparently, it's it's not that hard to ride Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really talked it up, but he wasn't very specific about what Mercedes are you riding? What, <laughs> the, the state of your Mercedes, but yeah, I mean, you know, I've definitely ridden Mercedes while I was broke, and well, I could definitely kind of say, snap me back in reality because it's like nobody feels sorry for me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I could definitely say I have. Uh, I think I'm probably in the same in the situation right now. I definitely have a quarter tank of gas in my very used e-class <laughs> brand used e-class <laughs> yeah i currently have a quarter tank of gas in my <laughs> i think the light's about to come on but i, I know i know i can make it to work tomorrow and possibly See, i'm back bad on. about that like just be driving like man just stop and get gas. i mean but i like getting gas at kroger because i get my fuel points mm. be cheaper but like i don't know i just need to <laughs> i'll have to get some in a more oh man see i Nah, if I wait till the morning, I'm not going to have time. I don't want to stop. Oh, well, I'm going to be riding to work on E. Yeah, stopping to get gas kind of screws up my whole thing. Because I'll be like, I usually, I should leave earlier, but a lot of times I leave, uh, like, just in time. So I'll get to work right on time or whatever. Not that I have to get work to work at a specific time, but I like to get there before 9 so I can bounce before 5. And uh, stopping to get gas, nice. that 15 minutes or 10 minutes, however long it takes, that's inconvenient. I'd rather they don't not. even take that long. <laughs> well, honestly, it doesn't. But it's I mean, just it slows like, you down because you got to pull out and you got to get back on in traffic and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, that. I def- definitely like. Even if I had the money, it's like I'm putting ten dollars in here because I don't feel like I gotta be. I gotta. I don't have time. Yeah, I got to somewhere to be. Put twenty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll just put ten ten dollars in and roll. I mean, I think I, I may have enough for tomorrow. We'll see. I, I don't be feeling like going on the way to work. I don't want to stop, and on the way home, I don't want to stop either. So maybe I'll go on my lunch break. Yeah, what I do. There is- so my car has a thing where it tells you how many miles you can get on the gas in your tank, and mm. I've been playing it close <laughs> a couple of times because <laughs> <clears throat> it counts down. And it, like you know, the gas in your tank sloshes around when you drive. So like depending if you're sitting on a hill or something like that it might say you got like five miles but then you sit on something level and it's like nah bro <laughs> you got one mile and so uh there's been a couple times it just said zero you have you cannot go any farther and the car was still running so i, mean, I was able to make it you know those extra miles or feet to the gas station to get some gas so i don't know i feel like uh at this point in my life i shouldn't be doing that type of thing like that's something i would probably i, I definitely did back when I was in high school, my first car or whatever. But I feel like at this point in my life, I shouldn't, you know, considering, not that I make a lot of money, but the amount of money I make and stuff like that, I shouldn't be driving around, you know, playing gas tank roulette or uh, gas tank roulette, whatever it is, Russian roulette. You know what I'm talking about. Who knows? But yeah. No, yeah, you do better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Yeah, I mean, in the, in the, but it's in the same token, yeah, I could. I could fill up my tank. Yeah, yeah, I could. Uh, it just takes so long. It's been a long time since I filled <laughs> up my tank. Because currently, like, I'll get $20. And $20 will hold me for a week and a half, about, or a little more than a week. Depends on what I do on the weekend. If I go out on the weekend, then no. But well, it'll last me like a week and a half. Because uh, my commute's not that long. And generally, I'm just going straight to work and straight home. I'm not really making yeah. too many detours. But, um,. I don't know, something else I was going to say. Oh, well. So what are we talking about this week besides jobs and gas? Um, I mean, it kind of ties into what you're talking about. When you first get to a job, you got to, like, try to show up and show out and be like, hey, you know, I can do this. I can do that. You know, um, talking about imposter syndrome, which is I've got the def- definition for that. Imposter syndrome, also known as, a, as imposter phenomenon or fraud 
syndrome or an imposter experience is the, a concept describing individuals who are marked by an, an inability to internalize their accomplishments and a persistent fear of being exposed as a fraud. Hmm. So, kind of like what you say, you first get to a job, you're trying to pr- prove yourself. Like, trying to, like, oh, okay, where do I fit in in here? Like, oh, wait, they, you know, <laughs> they expect all this stuff of me. Like, I got to prove myself or else I'm going to feel like, figure out that they made a mistake when they hired me, kind of thing. Um, yeah, I, I think <laughs> I, so I think, well, there's a lot of stuff I had to say about that. But um, in terms of starting a new job, I definitely have felt that in the past week or so. Not like I'm an imposter, but more like, they didn't know what they were getting or something like that because it's like so i work with a bunch of people that don't know they know some about what i do like the like so i'm doing ui stuff interface design front-end development most of them are doing back-end development and database stuff database uh engineering stuff so we're technically not like they know a little bit they can tell when i'm doing something but they don't know a lot about it so sometimes when they're talking to me i'm like i don't know what you're talking about and it makes me feel like i don't want to say i don't know what, I, what they're talking about but i really don't and so it's not good to be dishonest <laughs> but on the time other hand i don't want to come off as like wow he doesn't know that who did you all hire you know that type of thing yeah but um i think overall in the grand scheme of things, just, you know, when I think about what I do and my skill sets, I think it's, I don't think I I suffer from that whole imposter thing as much as I used to. But I I mean, now that I know the name of it, looking back, I can see how it's, you know, really affected a lot of the things I've done. Uh, Do you have that imposter thing yourself? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, not as severe as some, maybe, or whatever, but, I mean, it is definitely a thing where I have felt like, okay, what is going on here? I need to make sure I can um, prove that I fit in here. Um, I mean, it's even something I noticed, like, in the interview process at my latest job or whatever, because I noticed that some people that were in the interview, because it was like a group interview thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's weird, but um, some people, they were it was like they were trying to talk the language of the people interviewing. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, oh, this guy is a developer? Okay, let me show him how much development stuff I've done. Yeah. Which, I can see how somebody could fall into that. But in reality, they were looking for a designer. They're not looking for a developer. They have, the, they have web developers. They want somebody to make it look pretty. And accepting that, I think, helped me get over some of that. It's like, okay, no, they're not. It's, I mean, also, after I started and everything, it's like what they're expecting me to do. And then the things are like, oh, can you do that? Or whatever. like really simple stuff that I've been doing for a long mm-hmm. time. And they're like, how long would it take you to do this? And I'm realizing, like, I'm over time, it's like I've realized that I'm not out of place. Like, you know, this is because for a long time, I felt like just because, you know, I looked for a job for a long time. I mean, I, been doing freelancing and stuff like that and it was fine but i was also looking for a job <laughs> at the same time it just wasn't working out so a lot of times you fall into this thing it's like well they're not hiring me because i'm not good enough kind of mm-hmm. thing like i'm not doing you know i don't know all this stuff i don't know enough I mean, you know the gifts that i do have aren't good enough clearly so you know what do you think you feel like you going makes you feel that way um some of that can happen because you work at jobs where they will pay you nothing and they want you to do all this stuff and you don't realize how much you're mm. worth. Uh, I mean, and I know talking to you, I realize like, oh, I need to be asking for more money, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, just the numbers people were talking about and calling, talking to me about, like, like was nothing made me realize like, oh, I'm really not, you know, valuing, valuing myself the way I should. Um, so... I mean, then I mean, on top of that, I mean, like I mentioned, like you know, you do get a job or something like that, and then they don't want to pay you much, but they want everything out of you. And while you may know your value, if you stay in a situation like that long enough, it starts to erode your confidence. Yeah. Because even though you're like, no, I'm really performing, I'm doing what I need to do, but they're not paying you enough, so it kind of makes you feel like, oh, okay, well, why aren't they paying me enough? You know, why aren't they? You know. I mean, I don't know that everybody goes through that, but it's something that 
I mean, I'm in my head all the time. So you start to question your own value and it's something that erodes you, even if you try to put on a front that you, you know, you know, it, 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 you know, it festers and it turns into bitterness. I mean, even if you try to put on a front that it's not bothering you, that you're going to get it anyway, it does bother you after a while. And that's something you carry with you later that like, oh, wait, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not that good. Well, d- let me ask you this. So yeah. uh, that whole imposter thing, I think it, for me at least, it crop, creeps up the most when I'm in a situation when I'm talking to someone else in the same field. Oh yeah. So, uh, <laughs> how do you do? You, are do you have the same thing or what? Yeah, no, that happens to me. I mean, uh, as a photographer or as a designer or sometimes a web developer, you know, designer or whatever. Because I don't. A lot of the things I learned how to do, I just learned how to do on my own. And I'm guilty of not always staying, you know, up on the latest whatever tool people are using. So sometimes. We'll, Let's say with photography, they are like, oh, have you tried out this new, you know, Canon, blah, 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 et cetera, that does this and that? And I'm like, no, nope, <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. Because, <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I enjoy photography, but I'm not all into the technical side of it. So it, it is a definitely a thing sometimes when I've been around. Because I was at a um, fashion show in D.C. And, I mean, I, I mean, I had the skill to shoot it and everything, and I rented a good lens and all that kind of stuff, but... Did I have the wackest stuff out there? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> My pictures look good, though, but, you know, it can make you feel like, you know, kind of, especially in photography. I mean, I have the people out here, they just be buying stuff because it's some kind of superiority complex they got going yeah, on. Yeah, I there. think a, a lot of um, people, photography is definitely one place where that definitely happens because I've seen people where it's just like they have the biggest and the best, but it doesn't translate into their actual work. But, you know, me yeah. as someone who's definitely not a professional, definitely has just learned stuff the hard way and watching videos on, like, digital rev and stuff like that, it would scare me off. It would totally scare me off. And I'd be, yeah. ah, I'm not really Because you can't see their I'm work. Just playing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't see how wacky yeah. they may be. Well, know? I think the same thing <laughs> happens, like, so when I run into, like, a graphic designer or web designer person, for whatever reason, even though I've been doing this for a long time, I'm still somewhat, not necessarily intimidated, but I still feel like, oh, it's a real, they're, they actually know what they're doing. They're going to find me out. So uh, on some level, a lot of times I'll just kind of, I won't bring it up. You know, I find out what they do, but I don't necessarily bring up that I do the same thing. And especially, and then the same uh, thing applies about like equipment. Like if I see them walking around with a MacBook, the new MacBook, and they've got the new iPhone, like it's, it's like an assumption like, oh yeah, they're up on technology and stuff like that. Whereas I... Yeah. I do not have a new MacBook. I have a really old MacBook. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a really old MacBook. But, you know, I obviously have the skill set. So it can be intimidating. Especially, and then also, I think some people can talk a good game, but they can't actually play a good game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, just like you see then, a lot of commentators on ESPN. I mean, some of them have played sports and some of them haven't. They were good at talking about it, but they weren't good at playing yeah so i've met yeah exactly. uh so i used to work with this guy um he was higher up he was like management level but he was really good at talking about the software we, we were developing so he could talk to you about the different capabilities and all this other stuff but um when it came down to actual implementation or actually doing the work like so let's say we had some software that could copy papers so if someone had a question like, so what's the best way with this software to copy these papers or whatever, he could tell you all the different features of the software that would allow you to do it, but he would not necessarily know the best implementation because he didn't actually use the software. He was just really, he had read up on it. You know what I'm saying? So like he knew all the technical specs and all that other stuff from the user manual, but he never actually used it. And I think there's there was a big gap in there between, you know, what, Microsoft or Adobe or whatever it says the software will do and then how it works when you actually use it and um, when he was talking about it it definitely made him sound impressive and I was like oh wow I can't wait till you know I'm that good but then over time I realized like he was good at quoting stuff from the user manual or whatever but he didn't actually know you know he didn't have on the on the ground experience 
Yeah, no, I mean, I've, I've witnessed stuff like that because it, I mean, it does, it can make you feel inferior because you don't know how to talk about this stuff. And some people, depending on their environment that, you know, the school or whoever they're hanging with or whatever networking groups or what, you know, whatever they've been doing, they have picked up some of these newer things and know how to talk mm-hmm. about them. Whereas a lot of what we have learned how to do is just by doing the work, yeah. like, because the client don't care. Yeah. <laughs> they don't care. As long as it works, they don't. That's all they care about, and so that can make you feel. I mean, I definitely had to learn how to talk mm-hmm. it better. You know, talk it better. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think we talked about this in a previous episode, like where, like if you ask me about my skill with like Photoshop or whatever software, I generally don't say that I'm an expert because I don't feel as though I'm, a, I'm an expert, but. A lot of times, like you, you, like I know you mentioned it one time. The person who says they're an expert is just because they said so. It's not because they necessarily are or whatever. All you have to do is say you're an expert. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I just I just feel like I constantly um, underrate my skill set because of the assumption yeah. that other people are better. And a lot of these people that I assume are better, I haven't seen them prove themselves to be better they're just super confident in what little skill they have or what's whatever level of skill they have they're super confident and they present themselves like you know i'm the master of css or whatever yeah yeah it doesn't necessarily mean anything yeah yeah i mean and it i don't know i mean it's something i had to learn was instead of trying to prove my you know oh i know photoshop i know indesign you know all that kind of stuff a lot of people know it but it was more so focusing on what do I, what am I good at? Like I'm good at telling a story. I'm good at getting a message. I'm good at creating branding and stuff like that. That's what I'm good at. I don't care what mm-hmm. tool I use. Yeah, yeah. I can I can do something you know, better than a lot of people with I can Microsoft do it on paper. Word. It doesn't give matter. me Microsoft <laughs> Word or PowerPoint, and I can do something good. But if you give me Photoshop, yeah. well, it's going to be way Microsoft better. Word. But I'm I'm good with Word. Yeah. I'm terrible with Word, so don't give me that. <laughs> but I'm but, saying I um, I can design something in Word. <laughs> That will look better than what you would do in Word. Like the average Joe would do in Word. If he was just like trying to format a page or something. Yeah. Because it's it's not about um like I mean, like you mentioned Digital Rev. I like that um channel because they like one of the things is the um cheap camera mm-hmm. challenge where they they give a cheap, really basic, stupid, you know, kids camera or whatever, you know, really basic, not like a cell phone, like more basic than that, to a professional photographer and get them to do shoots with them and they still come up with yep. good shots and it's you know the best camera is the one that you have on you so I mean that, you know that's a good way to apply that um, but I mean it's I don't know I mean with the imposter syndrome I w- recently had an experience where I kind of I don't know felt like oh okay I felt better for myself. I, it kind of built up my confidence. Um, this past weekend, I had to. Somebody invited me to be a mentor at some kind of event at the. Um, this is the Brave Stadium here in Atlanta. Um, they had some kind of mentoring thing, and it was there. And uh, I definitely went there. Didn't I mean I didn't? First, I mean I didn't feel like I was supposed to be there once I got there. Because I'm like, man, I don't know what I'm going to tell these people. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm still trying to figure out myself. Yeah. Um, so what am I supposed to tell, you know, a student or whatever? I don't feel like I'm, you know, they may know something I don't know. Um, and then when I got there and I'm walking around or whatever, I mean, you know, not a whole lot of black people. I'm used to that though. I mean, that's another part of that where you don't feel like you fit in, but I don't, I'm so used to it. That doesn't bother me that much, mm-hmm. but you know, looking around, it was like a lot of people, they, I don't know how old they were, but they definitely looked older than me like people that were mentors for students and everything. And I was feeling like, man, like they're going to look at like, these people have way more experience than me. They don't know what I'm, you know, (laughs) they're going to, you know, the students are going to look, I mean, well, it did happen in a way. A lot of people thought I was a student. (laughs) I mean, even though I'm like mad, I'm not mad old, but like, you know, black don't crack. So, you know, (laughs) I'm younger than I look. I mean, I'm older than I look. I mean, a lot of people think I'm like 20 something, but I'm not. Um, so I mean, and once again, it's like I'm feeling out of place because people don't even think that I'm I can I'm here to help other people. 
And I, I did find um, somebody to help. I mean, they gave me a, it was so unorganized. They gave me a sheet of paper and it was like these three people are the ones you're supposed to talk to. And I don't know if those were fake people or not. They, I never found them. But I saw this random girl walking around. They looked lost. They ended up talking to her. And that was, that was cool and everything. And then I told her about it, about the podcast. So if she's listening, uh, shout out to her. Um, but <laughs> one thing that I, before we had to sit down and talk and, you know, all the, we had lunch and we were talking and whatever, um, which was awkward because they're sitting in the stadium seats. It was like, <laughs> how are you going to talk to them? Gotta... <laughs> yeah, it was weird. weird. We're just sitting in the stadium seats with like these dry sandwiches and stuff. But, um, before that, they were giving, doing a presentation on like the marketing team for the Braves, and they were showing these commercials they made and different stuff like that. And I realized something like one of them it was about parking, mm. but they had a it was a commercial with Allen Iverson in a press conference um, talking about parking for the Braves stadium. That's weird. Why? Why him? Exactly. It took me a while to figure it out. And they were like, oh, well, you remember when he was complaining about going to practice in, you know. Yeah, that's a stretch. In the pra- <laughs> that was a long time yeah. ago. Nobody remembers that. That was a long time ago. A lot of people don't ago. even know who also, Allen Iverson is. He also played basketball, not baseball. Yeah, and in Philly. Yeah, it, it was so weird. He was like, yeah, I love the break. It was so weird. I was like, why <laughs> is he in here? And they're all like, yeah, oh, yeah, this is our commercial. We got picked up. It was viral and blah, 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 whatever, and all this kind of stuff or whatever. And all I could think was like, man, good for Iverson for getting a check. But, like, y'all, what? This is the best thing y'all came up with? Yeah. And it, and it was a realization for me. It's like, you know, because sometimes you look at people in positions that you may consider desirable. And then you realize that they suck. Yeah. So that's, it's not that's that what I was going to say than, is, like... <laughs> The best way, well, not the best way, <coughs> excuse me, I have a cold, but one of the ways I've uh, kind of overcome the whole imposter syndrome in some ways, I still have it, obviously, but one of the ways I've overcome it is by meeting imposters. Because when you meet an imposter, they don't have to be all hardcore, like they're completely <laughs> lying about everything they've ever done, but if you just meet somebody who's trashed at their job and they're still getting paid and yeah. they're doing like, then you're like, all right, yeah. If he, if this person made it this far with that trash, then you know the sky's the limit for me. Yeah, yeah. It, a lot of times it's the resources and access to things and who you know yeah. that gets people in positions they are. It's not because they have better ideas than you or you know things like that. I mean, people will always have better equipment yeah. than you. You know, it's like with cars. It's like if somebody will always have a faster car or whatever. But like, so what? <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's about what you bring to it, and I think that's the core thing that I realized. It was like, you know, well, these people, they suck. I don't know what these other people are talk, talking to people about, but I, mean, I can bring what I can present what I can talk about. And I mean, and I, hopefully I was helpful. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'm definitely. <laughs> in my own way, just talking about stuff, you know, my journey. Yeah. But, so know. I've been in situations similar to that where, like, we were supposed to be helping people troubleshoot some problem or whatever and some imposter was there not like again not a real hardcore imposter but just someone who felt obligated to talk and answer questions because they felt like they were an expert on the topic so i let them talk and then when they were finished and what they proposed the the, the user was like nah i don't think that's gonna work then i would step in and say okay here's what you need to do and just drop some yeah. gems on them and roll out and doing those types of things definitely helped me feel more confident because some of the people, they they were very high up, very well paid, in like in positions like you said, positions I would like to have, but just not that smart. Or maybe maybe let me not say not that smart. They were smart somehow. They got in that position, but they just didn't know. They weren't didn't have their technical knowledge that I had. So I was like, oh, okay, I am I am actually good at this. And that that helps build yeah. my confidence. Built help to build my confidence. I think also another part of <clears throat> overcoming is learning. Because if I'm like you said, like you're not up to date on the latest technology stuff, like you don't have the latest camera, or whatever. But I feel like um, even though obviously I don't, I'm not into photography the way you are. 
but like if i'm constantly if i'm you know paying attention to what adobe is releasing and the new features that come out when they update you know, like creative cloud or whatever at least knowing about it even if i don't have it knowing about it makes me feel more confident when i'm talking about it because then i can say well yeah in the newer version this is what's possible or whatever and so that helps me feel more confident i mean knowledge is power like they say so knowing more can help you feel more more or less not an imposter yeah yeah um i mean that that's true i mean because <laughs> if you can back up your natural skills with like actual knowledge then that <laughs> you know and actually learn how i mean cause sometimes it isn't always about just being able to spout technical stuff because anybody that can read the manual mm-hmm. can do that but you know bringing that next level of understanding of what you're trying to yeah. do not not just how you're going to do it but um your vision and stuff like that i think can give you an edge in that case um and you know about not being scared of speaking up for yourself yeah <laughs> which can be hard especially when you're new somewhere or whatever you don't feel like you fit in or whatever yeah it's like awkward you don't know when to speak up for yourself or when to put in or if you're new somewhere you're not sure who, who's an imposter you know, who's not or who's in charge and who who you're you know yeah. you know if I put this out there who's going to veto it or whatever I mean I've, I've found in my for me when I really get in the zone when I'm designing stuff or whatever then I <laughs> It's not. I, don't, I wouldn't say. Um, I wouldn't say it's like super confident because that's that's. I feel like when you're confident, it may be something that you're mm-hmm. aware of. But I would definitely say it's more fearless. Where I'm not even thinking about like, oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe I should. Maybe it's not my place to input this or whatever. Or like, I'm new here. Maybe I, I, it's like I'm not even thinking about it when I get into, you know, into the zone of like what I'm doing. I get get into it and I'll just speak up and tell anybody it's like no that sucks you know, I mean you know not say yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know I'm not scared of putting in, in putting in my opinion because realizing that you know they brought me here for a yeah. reason <laughs> yeah and I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not just here to operate Photoshop yeah. I have real valid things to contribute and I want to be part of you know as much as possible. I mean, you know, like in my position now, I mean, I don't expect to be all in the executive meetings and all that kind of crap or whatever. I don't want to anyway, but like, you know, when it's relevant, you know, I feel, you know, I have something to contribute. And that, you know, that that's a, something that you have to learn over time, I think. You know, yeah, I, I think I've gotten being, more confident with that because, so at one of my previous jobs, I came in and their website was trash. It just looked bad. In terms of functionality, it was okay, but it just looked bad. And at first, I was like, well, let me fall back. Let me, you know, try and get a better understanding of what's going on and understand, you know. And then, gradually over time, I'll change things. Um, in that situation, you know, it took a long time. But finally, you know, over time, I got, I felt more confident. I felt out who was who on the team and figured out, and I, you know, I who else on the team I could kind of trust to listen to my vision and push things forward and eventually we got the site changed but it took a long time and I could have stepped in and immediately fixed things earlier so on another job I had um, early on I, I came in I saw the site look like trash and I told the boss like oh, bro this site looks like trash uh, if you give me you know, 30 40 minutes I can make it look better and just by saying that um, you know, we were able to change the whole site around. Everything looked better. Everybody was happy. Customer was super happy. And I think some of it comes to, like, not being afraid to step on toes on some level. Because that was what kind of helped me back the first time was, like, I didn't want to... Whoever actually designed the site, the guy who did it was on the team still. So I didn't want to be like, yo, what you did is trash. We're changing all this. <laughs> you know, your garbage. <laughs> it's, it's over for you. Uh, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> So I didn't want to do that, but um, I think there's a way you could do it without, like, hurting anyone's feelings. And then, like, when I actually got in, got in and talked to the guy, he was like, yeah, I'm not a designer. I just This is just what I put together. I thought it was okay. It was like, but you've got the skill set. Go for it. So I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then 
it was fine but i think yeah. that's one of those things where i had to get the confidence to just even have that conversation because a lot of times at first you're like well maybe he thinks he's the designer and not that i felt like an imposter but i just didn't have the confidence that i should have to just yeah. speak out and say look I'm good at this. I know how to do this, and this is bad. And so, let me fix it. Yeah. No, and that's <laughs> that's. What I mean, because you know, the person that was before me or whatever, some of the you know, I'm coming and I'm looking at some of the things in the past, and I'm like, mm. I mean, it's all right, but like, bruh. But knowing you know the backstory, he was doing a bunch of other stuff or whatever. But you know, it is like one of those things where you don't want to just. I don't. I don't mean I don't like to just dog people out, but I do got opinions about things. <laughs> I do, you know. I do think I do have an opinion on how everything should mm. be designed. So, <laughs> I mean, but that's 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 my job. That's you know what I do for a living, and that's you know where I live my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I some you know, and on some level, critique everything. I just don't like so. uh, coming in <laughs> and just trashing everything someone else has done. So. Well, because some people, I think they come in and do that in the name of doing it in spite of people like your president. Yeah, yeah. But, it's like, um, just I'm going to trash that's... everything for no reason. And he's not my president. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I forget what exactly point we were getting at right there. But <laughs> Well, I was going to say, like, so in terms of reasons why I think I have the imposter syndrome, I think it's, it's well, I think it's one reason one of the first reasons i thought of when we you know kind of introduced this topic was like <clears throat> it's hard to know when you reached like because for me i don't know like like if, if you're uh playing basketball you know you're professional when you're in the nba if you're you know a rapper or whatever you know you're successful if you've got like a platinum album or whatever you got a bunch of streams on spotify whatever i don't know like everyone had like a lot of fields have their own kind of benchmark of success Plateau yeah or whatever. and yeah. in graphic design web design there you know there's a bunch of you know you could win a webby or something like that or there's other awards and stuff you could win but of course i've never applied to win you know submitted any work for any of that stuff so of course i couldn't win that but I think there's still like certain levels like you know maybe I'm in the minor league but how do I know you're in the negro <laughs> league definitely in the negro <laughs> league but um, there's no way like there's not an easy way to know where you are in the overall spectrum of things so it's hard to say whether you whether you're there and then I think the other thing is until you've seen an example of what you're trying to be what a not uh, what a non imposter is then it's hard to kind of gauge yourself. And I think this goes that goes back to like the whole diversity and seeing examples that look like you and that type of stuff. Because even now, when I imagine a graphic designer or even a web designer, I imagine a certain color of person looking a certain type of way, doing certain types of things, that type of stuff. And I think that can lead to the end because I'm never going to be that person. Unless I yeah. get out here on some Sammy Sosa and change my skin color or something like that, so you're never gonna have a man bun. <laughs> I could, well, no, I'm not. But um, <laughs> so I think that has played a, a a role in this situation as well because you know, no matter how good I am from a technical or skills perspective or whatever, I'm never gonna look like what in my mind is the picture of who I am, who I should, who I'm trying to be. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah, it and is. that's crazy. That's that's crazy because we are both. I don't know that many designers, but definitely when you tell me about a graphic designer, I'm not the nope. person I picture. That's crazy. And I should be. That doesn't make any sense. It should be me because that's that's what I do. Yeah. That's that's interesting. Yeah. So I think that is. <laughs> I think that's a subconscious part of it as well because I'm never I'm never going to be that person that I imagine my my goal like my, my aspirational goal of being this or what or, or what you think yeah. people expect. I, mean, I kind of on some hands on some ways I definitely like people to assume I'm something other than I am. Like I don't want I want to be something that you don't expect. But on the other hand, secretly. I want to be what I expect because that would help me be more confident. You know what I'm saying? 
it's it's all confident it's all complicated yeah. and confusing but um so i think that has played a part in it and then i think that has affected me um in one of our previous episodes we talked about you know how much we charge for stuff and i think that has affected me in that area because even though i'm obviously very good in some people's opinions <laughs> but you know i have a, i have a years of experience i have a skill set i have a portfolio you could see i still don't charge what yeah. some newbies charge i mean on, we talked about raising prices and stuff like that and why you should raise prices and all that but still it's like secretly i'm like uh they won't want to pay me that much because they'll see that i'm not i'm an imposter i'm not that good yeah but then i've seen yeah what people customers have told me how much they were charged for some of the trash they got and i was like what you serious <laughs> yeah you paid that like hold yeah. on we need to we need to renegotiate no they were trying to outsource a logo recently and i was like man i do not charge with enough and i can knock that out quick i did something good too but yeah it, it's wow yeah that's interesting yeah i mean that that does affect the I mean, I remember we were talking about it a while ago, but that um, show on Netflix, mm-hmm. um, yeah. what's it called? Abstract? And they had that episode with the mm-hmm. guy that's a car designer, and that just opened my eyes. It was like, I had never imagined a black guy as a car designer. Yeah, if I found out... But now if you mention car designer, I probably, I mean, people don't mention it that much, but he's probably the person that, he's yeah. the only person I know about. You know, so he pops in my mind, and it's like before that, I that never popped in my mind. And it's not like I've never seen a black graphic designer before, but I mean, I guess it's not like a, some prominent person or whatever, or maybe there is, and I just don't pay t- enough attention to the industry or whatever. But well, I, think it, it's I don't know. Conditioning you, even though like during Black History Month on our Instagram and on our uh, podcast, we talked about some black graphic designers and some of their accomplishments, and some of them are pretty well known. But yeah. even with that knowledge, and I've read about a lot of them, it's still like kind of in my mind that that's not what a graphic designer looks like. That's not what a web designer looks like. So I don't know. It's, it's a messed up mind game that you have to play with yourself. But I think, yeah, like we talked about some of the, oh, let me see. Um, in terms of the overcoming thing, I think definitely getting out and meeting other people is is very informative in that process because when i was kind of freelancing and working kind of on an isolated in a more isolated environment by myself most of the time or on a team of people that didn't do the same thing then it's easy to kind of think of yourself as an imposter on some level because you're not working with people like you in terms of skill set but when you yeah you you're not sharpening your yeah. iron against anybody. But when else. I've worked on teams with other designers or other developers, then it's like, all right. <laughs> then it becomes clear, okay, I've met a few people that I think are really, really good, but then I've met, a, a, you know, the vast majority are mediocre. And so it's easy. Yeah. It, it makes it more easy to kind of um, evaluate yourself and say, I'm definitely not an imposter. Look at how much they're paying me. Look at who I work with. Look at, you know, what I've done, that type of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Look at my dad. But I think that you, um, you've got to work in an environment with other people. If you're working by yourself, that isolation, it can it can be bad both ways because you can make well, you, you think that you're amazing when you're trash, and it can also make you think that you're trash when you're actually pretty good or amazing. Yeah, because you have no... I mean, if the only opinion that you're getting is from your clients or something like that, I mean, you may never know yeah. how good you actually are. Because <laughs> they, they could be lying to you. I mean, they may be honest in their own eyes, but they could be lying to you just because they don't know what good stuff is or, you know, or they could think you're terrible by not paying you enough or not valuing your work or something like that. I mean, you're actually, you know, killing Well, that's it, the other so. thing. They may think you're good I mean, that's, for their price. Yeah. You're doubting yourself. You're charging less. And because you're charging less, they're like, oh, this is awesome. Like, what you designed isn't that great, but I only pay $50 for it. So it's awesome. Yeah. 
Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> so, do you have any uh, bullet point list of how to avoid that? <laughs> how to surmise that? What, what our steps are to, to get over hmm. that? I think besides, you know, interacting with other people in your field, I think that's the, probably the most important part is getting out there and interacting with other people, whether it's online or, you know, sharing your work also is helpful. Like you, you can use Behance and other tools to other portfolio tools online to show share your work with other people and get feedback. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's good to like yeah. you did that mentoring event. I think that's useful. Um, if you're, you know, not that experienced, go talk to a mentor and get more experience and get more understanding of what someone in your field who's not an imposter is actually like and what they what they had to do to get where they are. I think that would be very informative and that'll help you kind of dispel some myths about yourself and about, you know, that hypothetical imaginary person you picture when you think of a graphic designer or whatever. Yeah. Well, and to, to add to that, not only you going and talking to somebody else, getting a mentor for help or whatever, if you help somebody else out, because for a lot of teachers, yeah. they learn a lot from their students. You go help somebody else out, it may illuminate. It's like, oh, I actually do know something. I actually have experienced something. I actually have something to contribute. And you can be that person that you can be the, you know, the image that you can be that black graphic designer that, you know, <laughs> you know I mean, because the, the the reason why they, they I was invited to come to that thing because they they the people that knew about it and were involved in it. There are like, no black people. <laughs> we want, yeah, there's no black mentors. Like, come be one so that you know, just in case there's students there or whatever, they see somebody mm -hmm. you know yeah. that looks like them. And that's what happened. I yeah, I went and talked to a black girl because I was like, hey, she looks like she's confused, and I look over here like I'm confused, not trying to figure out what's going on. So I can help. Maybe I can help mm -hmm. her out or whatever. And that worked out. So. You know, you can be the, the image of that person, you know, for somebody else. Yeah, I think that's important. And learn something from them, and it will build up your confidence because you may, talking through it, you may realize you actually know yeah. something. <laughs> that's, uh, that's something I learned in college uh, in terms of helping others will help you. So in college, yeah, I was taking some easy history class, but these girls wanted me to study with them, and they looked all right, so I would go study with them. uh -huh. And that was, you know, mad dumb. Not that all women are dumb, you know, nothing like that. But just these particular ones weren't that smart. So I would, while we were studying, I was more teaching them the information than studying myself. You know, I wasn't like trying to memorize stuff. I was just like, okay, yeah, so here's what we need to know from this chapter. Here's what we need to know from this chapter. You can remember this by remembering this or whatever. You know, I'm basically teaching them the stuff. And then at the end, I realized, oh, I don't need to study anymore because <laughs> I just I just taught the class. I know what I need to know. And that I think that helps, you know, like I said, it helps both people. And then in the same way you said, like, you can learn stuff from people because everybody does things differently. So, you know, I have my own way that mm -hmm. I I was talking to some guy. I forget who it was, but he was talking about how he used to do drop shadows in Photoshop. Because I guess back in the day before I learned Photoshop. You had to do, like, if you wanted a shadow, you'd take the object, you'd blur it, like, make it black, blur it, and then turn down the opacity and put it behind the, the thing you wanted the shadow. And I was like, wow, <laughs> that's, like, the <laughs> the slowest way to do it ever. But he was yeah. like, that's how we learned. And I think that's, yeah, the same thing probably applies to me. I'm probably doing something the wrong way myself. And I don't even know because I don't, if I'm not out there talking to people and, you know, working with people, I'm not going to ever find out. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to learn anything new if you're, I mean, even if, even if you're in the field doing the work or whatever, I mean, and I understand that you have bills to pay, you got to work. Um, but you know, you can have a moment to learn something new. I mean, it doesn't take that long. Like, Oh, you know, let me Google mm -hmm. real quick. Like, I mean, what something new I can learn how to do in Photoshop or something like that. It don't take that long to do that. Yeah. If you got the time, I mean, that's one thing I would say now. I have a little bit more time. Everything's not, I mean, things are, sometimes things are going to be rushed, but I'm not so pressed for time and every minute needs to count because I'm getting paid for it or whatever. So I actually can take a moment to be like, okay, let me learn how to do this real quick. You know, let me think about this. <laughs> Maybe there's another way. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So I think, so that's two things you can do. Talk to, interact with other people, learn as much as you can. And then I think the other thing is, is really um, 
I think it's a mental thing. You've got to basically just try and picture yourself. Like, it's really just a self-perception type of thing. Because, you know, like I said, I don't picture myself when I think of a graphic designer or as of a, a web designer or whatever. So you got to get to the point where you can picture yourself as the thing that you actually are or on the way to being. So um, I don't have any idea about how best to go about that. But that's that's more of a, a larger <laughs> issue. But I think that's something you got to work on is like, just kind of believing in yourself and saying, you know, I am, I might not be as good as I could be. I'm learning, but I'm, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm on my path and I'm working towards what I want to be. Yeah. You got to picture yourself in the future, you know, or Hey, go research somebody that does look like you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Cause there probably is somebody out there doing it. Like, you know, try to find that. So, um, I think it's it's I feel like it's it's it can be tough to find because one thing um, speaking of that abstract series I forget which one I watched it was one about this letter lady in New York who does graphic design stuff she was designing some posters for some theater or something like that oh yeah and they yeah, showed yeah. like a shot of her company where she works it wasn't Pentagram it might have been Pentagram or I don't know which one it was but somewhere in New York some design studio now one black person in sight. Well, I think I might have seen one yeah. like person in the background, but none. And like now, yeah. I'm more sensitive to that because, well, for all the reasons we said, like there's no examples out there, and um, yeah. I feel like it, when I've looked for examples, because I've gone to like local events and stuff like that, it, when you look for examples, it can be depressing. Because uh, I've met people that were trash, and I was like, oh, you're, you're the guy, <laughs> like. You can't you can't be represented for us, man. <laughs> like I was hoping to find somebody <laughs> really really good, and then that but that I think that's the thing. Like maybe this is another way to kind of overcome it. Is like you can't necessarily you won't always have that example there for you that looks like you and fits yeah, all the things you need. True. Sometimes it's just not available. Sometimes you are the example. Well, that lady that you're just talking about, she talked about that like. There were plenty of people that were like they didn't want her to design it because they didn't want a woman designing mm-hmm. their stuff. And so, yeah, I mean, so I mean, she had to be the example for himself, for herself. I mean, there, the, the thing is, honestly, there's always going to be somebody that did it before you. It may not be a direct um, match to what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, you know? but you've got to find your own inspiration, the inspiration yeah. that will motivate you to believe in yourself and move one and that might not yeah. necessarily be the person that looks like you or whatever it's going to be it needs to be it's going to be something and that's what you need to you know get that confidence to believe yeah. in yourself and move forward yeah i mean another thing i would say um another thing that i think can help is um well like at this where i'm at now i mean i've done it before in the past i've taken like personality assessments and stuff like that um i would say do stuff like that mm-hmm. I think it helps give you some clarity on what your gifts are, what your learning style is, what, you know, what your needs are, you know, to reduce stress, to be happy and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And that can give you, I mean, cause that happened for me, it illuminated why it's like, Oh, okay, well why I feel like I'm unorganized. And it's like, Oh, because this, you're somebody that likes projects. So if you don't have a project to work on, then you're not going to be as organized with the little mundane things mm-hmm. that you have to do. And I was like, that's true. I am like that. <laughs> I like, give me a project. I'll finish it, you know, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, ask me to do some little stupid thing. I'm like, ah, I don't want to do that, you know? So, I mean, it, I think it helps, it helps you understand who you are as a person. And once you understand that, then you understand better what you have to mm-hmm. contribute. And I think that, that goes in like you what can... you were talking about with learning. Um, it's important not only to learn new things about, you know your your area of work or whatever but it's also to learn new things about yourself uh i think yeah. uh, so there's this song it's on um bad <laughs> no it's oh. on talib okay. kweli well, it's on i think it's on uh black star rake it up no oh. <laughs> it's not it's not it's not a what's his name Yo Gotti. Race to China. In the, sorry. Yeah, sorry. so there's a song, and 
<laughs> Nicki Minaj rhymes China with China like 15 times and people go crazy about her verse like it's tight but um so anyway it, it anyway the song is called I think it's called Knowledge Yourself but anyway I think Knowledge Yourself is uh for like half of Tyler Quilly's songs <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's real yeah <laughs> But anyway, I, I used to listen to I, I listened to the album. The first time I heard it was like probably in 2003 sometime. But anyway, I listened to it and it really stuck with me in terms of like if you know yourself and you know what skills you have and how you work best and your personality and like like all the stuff you were talking about, you can be more confident because you can walk into a situation and say, "All right, hey, there's something I can excel at." Let me go do that, and then I don't have to feel like an imposter at all because I know I can do that, and it's not even going to be an issue. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. I think that's one very powerful thing. Because also, if you know your weaknesses, then I know like I'm not going to run up on somebody trying to take some situations. photos because yeah. I'm not that great at taking pictures. I'm probably better than your average person, yeah. but I'm not amazing, so I'm not going to go out and promote that as one of my skill sets. <laughs> Or, I mean, not so much taking pictures, but just running up to a random person and taking a picture. You, that may not be your personality yeah. type. You don't like that kind of situation, so you're not going to... Not that you can never learn how to do that, but then that be not may not be the thing that you mm-hmm. excel in. There may be... There's maybe another area, and there's probably reasons that you're like that, and you don't always have to look at those as mm-hmm. flaws. You just look at it like, this is those where, are, this is my role. Just like the yeah. basketball analysis we talked about later earlier, like, you need to know what what position you play best at and go try and find a place where you can play that position because if you're out here five foot one trying to play center it's not going to work no you'll get posterized yeah um but yeah I mean uh, you have any others to add to that I mean that sounds pretty good (laughs) <laughs> we'll have to remember that for the notes, but no, I, I can't um, think of anything else. I don't know. Like, obviously, we've neither of us have uh, completely overcome this whole imposter syndrome. But I think, I think so. One thing I will say about it is, I think there is a healthy level of imposter syndrome or of not being overly confident. I think there's a healthy level to have. Yeah, well, that's so. Yeah, yeah. So, so you don't want to be unrealistic. You like, know when you I'm, I'm the best. I'm amazing. And it's going to be huge. It's going to be awesome. So, yeah. um, I think there's a healthy level to have, but you know, you really got to evaluate that, and then you really got to look back. Like, I mean, looking back at my own, you know, career or whatever, I can see how the whole imposter syndrome has kind of, in some ways, shot me in the foot in terms of not charging enough, not asking for enough money at jobs. Not even applying for some jobs because I was like, oh, I can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. And those people writing those jobs down, they don't even know what the real job requirements are. Half yeah, the time, yeah, you just so. got to get in on the interview. And, <laughs> and once you're there, you're like, oh, that's what you wanted? <laughs> Why does the yeah. job description say garbage, yeah. man? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's true. I mean, a lot of times you can defeat yourself your biggest enemy a lot of times is yourself well Um, like so for example my current position my job title i'm a software engineer (laughs) if you told me i was ever going to be a software engineer i would not believe you like not even like within the past like five years ago if you told me that i wouldn't believe it but i've had some crazy job titles but what i do (laughs) is clearly not so i guess uh, it is kind of software engineering on some level but it's not what somebody would think if you said. I'm yeah, a if you told engineer. me, "Hi, I'm a software engineer," I'm going, "Oh, wow, you're really you, you're you're really smart." But I can tell you, I'm a software <laughs> engineer right now, and it's true. But and I am smart, but I'm saying like it's not what I in- anticipated, and I think that's. It all goes back to like the the perception thing because I think sometimes I'll read job titles for positions that I may be applying to or looking at, and if the job title doesn't sound like whatever I'm looking for or something I feel like confident like I could do then I won't even sometimes I won't even look at it because I'm like it says software engineer I'm not a software engineer but then you read the job and it's like oh that's what you wanted but I I think that that's happened a lot to me at least because I remember when I first moved here to DC or when I was planning to move here to DC I was looking for jobs and so I I went in monster.com or whatever and I'm looking up graphic design web design because that's 
what I felt my skill set was. And that's where it is. But a lot of the jobs that were actually graphic design or web design jobs would not have been labeled that. Unless they were strictly like mm-hmm. a graphic designer. And if you had given yeah. me one of those strictly graphic designer jobs, I probably would have been so scared, like, oh, I'm an imposter. For a graphic design job? Yeah. yeah, when I first moved here, so that would have been like 10 years ago? Yeah, I would have been shook. <laughs> like, so yeah. if you think about it, like, I went to college, but my degree is technically not in graphic design. I taught myself graphic design on the side. <coughs> and then oh. I've owned my own business doing graphic design before I moved up here. But it was always kind of working by myself or with some other people that didn't really do graphic design. And so if you put me in an environment where I'm working with other graphic designers, I would be a little nervous. Just because I'm like, oh, these oh. guys actually do it and they work at an actual agency or whatever. And I would be a little nervous like, uh, they're going to ask me something about see, kerning, I'm, and I'm not going to know. <laughs> see, I've still never had a job with other designers. Like, it just hasn't happened where I was like, oh, this person's also a designer. I mean, I've worked with people where it was like, this person also has done a little bit yeah. of design, but not somebody else that was legit, like, I'm also a graphic designer yeah. kind of thing. Um that hasn't happened. I <laughs> so I don't. I don't I've worked know. with designers doing freelance stuff, but most of them, yeah, it was like email interaction. I never worked, you know, in the together same location with any yeah. other designer. So yeah, yeah, that's why I was like, I would be scared because I've never even been in that position. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess I, mean, I feel like school was like that. You know, I mean, I. I mean, I hope we don't sound mad cocky, but I don't know. I mean, a lot of people in my class were whack. That's just a fact. (laughs) Actually, let me let me retract my statement. I have worked with designers one time. I had an internship my junior year of college, working with actual graphic designers, and yeah, there was a lot I didn't know when I started, and I learned a lot, but. I'd probably still be nervous getting a full-time job because the internship was... It's an internship. It's not, you know, they expect you yeah. not to know everything. But if you hire me, <laughs> your expectations might be different. I mean, I guess I guess I would be nervous in some levels because I think some people expect a certain... I, in my own mind, I think some people suspect, ugh, expect a certain level, a certain process that designers go through or a certain way that they do things or certain <laughs> levels of organization that I don't always adhere to. <laughs> yeah. well, so one thing <laughs> I was going to say about expectations so um, in a couple of jobs I've had I've worked with people and you know at the start of the job my coworkers were willing to sit down with me and basically teach me how to do stuff that and I was like no I'm good I know how to do that and after that's happened a couple of times I began to realize that they didn't expect there were certain things that I already knew that they I guess didn't expect me to know and I was like really I, like this is easy I've no, I've know how to do this yeah and all this time you point. thought that that's what yeah you just needed to know, know how to do everything yeah yeah because I guess order... that, I mean again it's unrealistic expectations I expected like because even with my job I just started like a week and a, week and a half ago two weeks ago uh I don't I, I'm, I'm just nervous about coming to a job and asking too many questions like what? What is that? How do you do that? What is that? How do oh, I open yeah. this? Like I don't, I don't want to be that guy that just doesn't know anything. Because then it's like, all right, come on, son. So yeah. I don't know. It, it's just interesting because I've been on a job where, so I had, I got this job. I was working somewhere that will remain nameless, but I had to use Dreamweaver to upload some files. And my coworker sat down like, okay, so we use this program called Dreamweaver. Have you used it before? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then he started walking me through step by step how to open Dreamweaver and get to the FTP part. And okay, FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. I was like, it's like, who did really? you hire before me? Yeah, like, yeah. Who, who worked here before? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Did you did you have to explain? Well, that's that's wild. I mean, I think that I'm starting to realize that too because it's like. I don't know. Sometimes you, you're in a position where people actually value you for what you do bring to the table. 
Mm-hmm. Not just your technical, there's not just the number of things that you know how to do. Because a lot for a long time, I thought it was based on how many things do you know how to do, mm-hmm. and not like, oh, okay, no, I mean it's cool that you know how to do that stuff too. But what we really want you to do is be able to design something good for us. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like eye opening in a way. It's like, oh, stuff like that does exist. You know, they actually, you know, some people actually do want you to specialize and be good at. You know, recognize you for what you are actually good at. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, since there's other people that can develop and do all the coding and all that kind of stuff, I don't want to do that. I mean, I'll do some HTML and CSS, but I don't really want to. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I don't have to. I don't even have to stress about it. And that's a mm-hmm. weird burden taken off of me that I realize I always had over my head. It's like that feeling that you need to be good at everything in order for people to see value in you. So. I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't. I don't want to make it all about race, but like they said, like a black man has to do something amazing to be not thought to, of as not regular. to make it about race, but the white man. No, <laughs> but I, I, you you know that saying like they say like a black person has to do like something super amazing to be thought of as amazing, yeah. whereas a white person just mediocre, and a lot of times they'll be praised for it. Yeah, yeah, which. It's frustrating, but you know, also, you know, don't you want to be amazing? Yeah, I, I have no problem <laughs> doing ma- amazing stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, and, you know, and I mean, and, and you know, just the way the world is now. I mean, that may be something that is still true, but depending on what you do and the way the world is now, a lot of the limits that you are up against are, you know, it's not as hard to find other ways to supplement what you're doing or whatever, you know. Yeah, you I feel think, like you're not making it. You, you, it's kind of up to you. <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest takeaway that I would want people to get from this is like, don't handicap yourself. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you really are trying to hone your craft and get good, then be confident in what you do. A very do a good self evaluation. Talk to people who are further ahead in their career than you, who you respect their opinion and stuff like that. And then based on that evaluation and your knowledge of yourself and your what who you are and what you can bring to the table, be confident. Be confident yeah. in what you can actually do. And if you yeah. want to be better at other stuff, get better. Yeah. I mean, it's like when you when you're when you're a kid and you look up at the adults like they're perfect and then you grow up and you're like, Man, y'all are fake. Y'all don't know what you're doing either. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there's lots well, let me not say lots, but there's several adults that I looked up to as a kid, and then I run into them now, and I'm like, ah, oh, this nigga's trash. <laughs> I don't say that to them, but, um, you, you know, you get older you and you realize, okay, it. you're still doing the same thing. You're still trying to tell me the same jokes, and you're still out here having the same problems that you were when I was a kid. Yeah. That's like not 20 okay. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean, you get, yeah, you realize that. I mean, you you can learn things from going, getting out and talking to people, but you also it can be eye opening because you realize everybody out here faking it. Yeah. So it's okay. <laughs> you know, just keep on going. <laughs> yeah. Don't give up. Keep trying and believe in yourself. That's the end of our motivational speech. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of a two chain song. Well, uh, or it says believe in yourself. Hell, I think I forget what it is. Never mind. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we hope that's been informative, interesting to listen to us uh, talk about our uh, self confidence problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So thanks for tuning in. Um, definitely check us out on the social media accounts: Instagram, Facebook. Twitter. I kind of stopped tweeting for a while, so I might start tweeting again. So if you care, our Twitter is Alien Muffin. Uh, our YouTube channel, we posted a couple videos a while back. I need to post another video. We shot some videos back in August that I need to edit and post. Um, thanks for tuning in. Check out our previous episodes. We, uh, our one year anniversary episode went out a couple weeks ago, so check that out. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.